Hey there, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be explaining how to change the strings on a double bass. So if you're looking at your instrument and you haven't changed the strings in a long time and you're ready to get your strings changed, hopefully this will help you get that done. Uh, I'm here at my school where I teach. Uh, my name is Seth Gamba. I teach at Elkins Point Middle School and I've just got one of my school bases out here and I want to say here right at the beginning a big thank you to the Elkins Point documentary film crew for helping me out making this video. So from here we'll get right on into it. <clears throat> I'll start here with some of the tools that I have. First thing you're going to need and I really highly recommend this is one of these. Now this is a, a string winder but this is a very particular string winder. This is a turbo tune. Turbo tune, you probably can't read that, it's kind of black on black, but we got a turbo tune right here, and this is the only one that I'll use. Number one, it fits on most bass keys, and number two, and this is the real key to it, it comes apart like this so that you can mount it into a drill or into an electric screwdriver. So I have an electric screwdriver right here. This is a really inexpensive one I bought just to belong to the school. Um, you can also you have one like this, just any standard drill. I actually prefer to use this electric screwdriver. It's not nearly as powerful. This thing, it'll break your strings if you're not careful with it. This one just doesn't quite have enough juice uh, to break the strings. Um, really important, I have a couple of number two pencils here sharpened. I try to keep a couple because if one breaks, yeah, that's gonna be really important. I have a pair of needle nose pliers. A lot of times I don't even end up using these, but I like to have a pair just in case I need to reach down into the peg box and grab the end of a string. Of course, I have my strings I'm going to be putting on the base. I have a tuner and I have a towel. And the towel ends up being pretty important just for the protection of the instrument. And that's pretty much the tools that you need. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with this towel. I'm going to come down over here. And I'm just going to lay the towel here underneath the tailpiece. That way, when the strings start coming out, you're just protecting the instrument from getting scratched by the metal ends of the strings down over here. Also, I want to point out the case of the instrument, since I've got the instrument laying up on a table. Um, I put the case under it just to keep it from rocking around. Uh, when I do this at my house, like if I'm changing the strings on my bass, I usually just put the bass up on a couch rather than a table. It holds it pretty well, and I'll hang the scroll um, over the over the armrest so I can get to it. But if I'm just laying it on a table, I'll put the case down just to hold the instrument stable. When I change the strings, let me go ahead and put my turbo tune into my electric screwdriver here. I like to do two at a time. So if we can get down a look inside the peg box, you can see that we have two barrels that are up high, the A string and the D string over here, the E string and the G string right here. I'm going to do one side of the instrument then the other and the reason I'll do two strings at a time is because you really can't get to the E string unless the A string is gone because the, the strings get in each other's way. So I'll take both of those off. You never want to take off all four strings. If you take off all four strings then your bridge comes off, your sound post can fall, all kinds of stuff. So I'll take off two, do those two, then I'll take off the other two and do those two. When you go to take off your strings, bear in mind do you usually have righty tighty lefty loosey, right? If you're turning this clockwise, you're actually on a on a base, it's opposite. So when you turn this clockwise, it's actually gonna be loosening your strings. If you go counterclockwise, like you're loosening something, pow, you're gonna break your strings on accident. So you wanna check, make sure I'm going clockwise here. I'm gonna get this lined up onto my G string. All right, this is my my uh that's my A string, but that's alright. I was gonna I'll do A and E first. So here I go. Uh, you may notice that I'm keeping a little bit of tension on the string here as it comes off because if I let it go loose then it just kind of gets messy down in there so I want to, while I'm taking it off or putting it on, just holding a little bit of tension here makes a big difference. Almost there, another half a turn. Here comes the A string. I'll just set this to the side for now. Take this off. It's here on the E string. Oop, let me make sure I'm going the right way. Clockwise that way. Set that on the key, and here we go, taking off the E string.
All right, now I've got the E string off, and I'll tell you what, having this turbo tune made it so I don't mind changing bass strings. It used to be I hated changing bass strings because I do it by hand, and by the end of it, my forearm would be all sore. It was awful, just twisting and twisting and twisting. So the turbo tune is huge. So now I'm going to come on down over here, and I'm going to have to take my strings out. I'm going to get the, the E string first here. And this is where that towel comes in handy because I don't want the, the ends of these strings banging around and scratching the base. All right, so I got an old E string here. Just uh, toss that down to the side. Get the A string out. There we go. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clip on my tuner here. Uh, any old tuner will do. You probably use one built into your phone or whatever, but I'm just going to go ahead and clip that on so as I get the new strings on, I'm ready to go. So coming back up here, I am going to do the E string first because what I don't want is to have that A string in the way while I'm trying to get the E string on, which is why I've taken both of them off. So I've got my E string here. I'm going to pull this on out. So in the bag, it depends on the brand you sh of string you've got. They package them differently. I'll go ahead and just get rid of that bag. There's a little felt on here. I'm definitely going to want to use my felt. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get the string unwrapped. And I'm going to go ahead and slide on my felt. That on down to the end. Now I'm going to come down here. Now you would think that the tailpiece has these large holes in it here so that you could just pop it in, but you can't. I've never actually met a base tailpiece that you can actually fit the ball of the string in. I don't know why, but it just doesn't quite work out. So you've got to come in, thread it in like this, and then I'm going to pull it on through. All right, thread that up in there. Now, before I get any further, I want to take my pencil, and this is a pretty important step, and I probably could have done that First, I'll go ahead and do this for the E and the A string. I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to color in the grooves of the bridge. And what this does, is it gives you a little bit of a lubrication. It puts that graphite on there. So as the string slides through the grooves, it slides nice and smooth. It doesn't bind and tear up the winding on the string or the bridge. So I'm going to do that at the bridge. I'm also going to do that at the nut. Just Scribble nice and good down in there, get a nice layer of graphite down in there so this string slides in nice and smooth. All right, so I'm going to bring the E string up here. I'm going to thread it into the barrel. Now, the thing that I'm going to want to do at the end of it, if you can look at this, I'm going to try and get my string so that it's coming off of the barrel in a straight line. I don't want it to come over an angle here into the nut. I want it to come in a straight line down into the nut. So I'm, when I put it on, I'm going to wrap it first to this side, and once I've used up some of this extra string here, I'm going to cross it over and wind it back over here so that at the end, it comes off the barrel right here and goes straight down off the nut. Put it through a little bit here. And now, I want to go counterclockwise to wind the string back on. I'm going to pull tight. I want, and here I definitely want to keep some tension. You see, I'm going to pass to one side, and I've got, I don't know, about a half an inch maybe of uh, the end of the string poking up through. And I'm going to want to wind it pretty tight. I want to keep these windings right next to each other. And if you lose tension right here, it can actually cause some problems. You get these windings kind of coming out, and they get sloppy, and then it, it can be trouble. I want to keep them up right nice and tight against each other. I'm keeping an eye down on it towards the bridge, so I'm going to stop here for a moment. Check it, make sure I'm going over the bridge. That's still got a fair amount of string, so I might go another winding or two here. <clears throat> and I think here I'm getting pretty close, so I'm going to go ahead and cross over. It comes to the other side of the hole here. All right, and I think that's going to come out just about straight. I want to keep this nice and tight in here. Now, here's something important. If you look at my left hand up here, as I start to wind this thing down against the fingerboard, 
I want to be really careful to be pinching because I had a friend at a violin shop tell me if I go in like this, look at that, I can just about cut my finger off with the string. I want to pinch so as it comes up to tension, it bounces out of my hand right there. So now I'm going to turn on my tuner. And this last little bit, I just got it kind of close. Actually, I went a little bit past, so I'm up to an F now. I'm going to drop it back down to a, around an E and let it sit. That's just kind of close to an E, good enough there. All right, so now I'm ready to put on my A string. And basically, I'm going to repeat the process here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this open. Drop that out of the way. Unwind my string. You know, I want to be careful I don't kink it or anything like here. I'm going to be gently unwinding it. Got my felt. I'm going to go ahead and thread that on. All right, so I'm going to come back down to the other end of the base here. Again, I'm going to thread it up underneath the tailpiece. Pull it on in. I've already done the graphite and the slot on the bridge and in the slot on the nut. So I'm going to come on down here. And I think I'm going to go, I did charge this yesterday, but it seems to be running out of juice. So just to keep this thing going, I'm going to go ahead and mount this in my drill. It'll make the thing go a little bit faster, but I have to be a little bit more careful about it because this thing has a lot more torque. So I've got to be a little more careful about not letting it go too fast or too far. It's also a little bit heavier, so a little bit harder to deal with in that respect. And let's see, I'm going counterclockwise, so I'll be screwing it on. Go ahead and get that in the slot, and here we go. And I'm going to be winding a little bit towards me at first and then crossing back over. And you know what I'm probably going to have to do, I am going to, just to make sure I have room here, I'm going to get that D-string a little bit out of the way. I'm going to loosen my D-string up some. There we go. See how this thing goes it's just a lot faster. I've got to be a little more careful with it. So now my D-string is just kind of loose, but I've got a tightened E-string and a tightened G-string still holding the bridge in place. Let's change direction here. There we go. Let's get the angle right. There we go. Nice and smooth now. See, this does go a lot faster, but you do have to be a little bit care more careful with it. Caught on the, there we go. And see what happened in there? I had to loosen my tension a little bit. My windings came a little loose from each other, so I'm gonna go ahead and just take my hand and push those windings back together. I wanna keep it nice and tight, nice and neat. Everything in there nice and neat. There we go. I think that's pretty good. Get back to it. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and cross over because I'm keeping an eye on it down here. So I'm going to cross it back in because I want to go in a straight line. Get to the other side of there. Down to the nut. I'm going to pinch. Be really careful. There we go because I don't want to go too far and break it. Now, I did go a little bit too far, but not too much, so I'm going to bring it on back down. And that's roughly an A. I'm going to recheck my E string. That's about an E flat. I'm going to bring it on up. Let's go ahead and stretch. All right, so now A and, D, A and E are done. I'm going to move on and get the G and D all the way off, so I'm going to change the direction on my drill. Clockwise is going to loosen the string. Try that again. There we go. Ooh, look at that. See, you got to be careful. Why don't I put it on? That's a little bit slower setting for my drill. Some drills you can do that. And D string here. There we go. It's a little easier to control like that on a little slower speed. One of the things I like about that electric screwdriver, although it didn't hold its charge too good. All right, D strings out and get that out of the way. Go ahead and get the G. Let's 
Get a little shaky, I'm gonna recenter it. And we're shaking some, get that back on center. All right, got those out. Come on back over here. Get those out through the tailpiece. All right, I'm going to take my pencil over here. Again, I want to give a, a nice liberal scribble down into the grooves in the bridge and the nut. And then one thing I'm going to check here in just a second, because I've done two strings already, is one of the things that can happen is that as you're pulling the strings in across the bridge, it is not uncommon for the bridge to tip up towards the scroll. So I'm going to check to make sure that the feet are still flat on the top of the base, which they are not. So while I've got just tension from two strings on here, I'm going to do a little adjusting and just knock it down a little bit. And what I'm checking to see is that the feet of the bridge are flat right on the top of the base. I've still got a little bit of a gap down here, so there we go. A little bit more. And I think that's, that's got it, that's pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do the E string first because I don't want the, the excuse me, the G string first, I'm on the other side. I'll do the G string first because I don't want the D string in my way as I'm dealing with this shorter barrel. So here's my G. Unwind the string here. Thread it up underneath, pull it through. Okay, here I'm going to check that I'm going counterclockwise because counterclockwise is going to bring the string on there. Let's go ahead and thread it through right here, get this in position. There we go. And on this one, I'm going to wind away from my body at first and then back because again, I want to get it in a straight line over the nut. Go ahead and pull it tight. Gives the string a little crimp as it goes around the barrel enough to hold it in. So I keep some tension on the string to keep these windings nice and tight. I'm running into the A string a little bit, so I may go ahead and cross over. I'll go ahead and cross over. I think by the time I get all the way back out to the side of the peg box, that's probably gonna be enough room to do it. So I'm keeping an eye down on the bridge that uh, I'm sitting in that notch. Here it's coming down, and now I'm gonna change over to a pinch here because like I said, I don't wanna accidentally cut my finger off. There we go. It's got it kinda close. I'm going to check my tuner. I'm on an E, so I'll finish it up by hand. F, F sharp. There's a G. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and check my A and E because the tension keeps changing on these things, so the, the pitch is going to be changing. and bring that A up a little bit, E up a little bit. One more to go. Get the D string and it'll be all done. Threading on my felt and bring it on down to the tailpiece here. Under and up. Bring it on back. Again, I've already done the pencil 
so that I got a nice, you know, smooth area in the bridge and up for it to go. I'm going to thread it on in there and get this on the key. And let's see, I'm going to come, you know, I think I'm going to go away from me and then back across because I think that'll get it right in a straight line with the knot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cross because the D-string doesn't have as much to take up because this barrel is so far away. That's got it pretty close and I'll finish it up by hand. There's a D. Now as you put each string on, you know, again, it changes the tension on the instrument. So uh, I'm going to retune everything. The E is dropped to an E flat. A is dropped to an A flat. That's my D. There's a G. And depending on the strings you've got, you know, sometimes these, these ones will probably be good by tomorrow. They'll be staying in tune. Sometimes it takes a few days for them to stretch out and really stay in tune. So you expect to be tuning the instrument a lot. So I'm just going to kind of get it, get it close. I'm not worried about having it too great because it's going to drop and have to be retuned several times anyway. But if you look down in here one more time, you can see all of my strings going in a straight line across the nut, which just makes everything, you know, less tension over here. Everything stays a little more settled. Yeah, I'll check the bridge one more time just to make sure that those feet are sitting flat, and they are. The tension from the A and the E held it in place while I did the G and the D. And uh, I think that's pretty good. So I've got brand new strings on my bass. It should be ready to go tomorrow. And that's how you do it. So hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, if you have found this video helpful, please remember to uh, like the video, uh, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.